Okay, you're good to go. Okay, let's get it going then. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is the City of Ellensburg City Council meeting for the evening of Monday, 20, uh, December 21st, 2020. Um, we'll start with our roll call. Ingle? Here. Goodluck? Here. Lamb? Here. Lilquist? Here. Miller? Morgan? Here. Tab? I'm here too. That's great. Thank you. I saw no proclamations, nor words and recognitions in our packets. Um, so that would move us to the approval of the agenda. Mr. Mayor, I'll move approval of the agenda, adding uh, 9C, an emergency resolution related to um, information technology. I'll second that motion. Um, so we have a motion and second to um, <clears throat> amend the agenda, adding a 9C. Uh, an emergency resolution regarding what were the words again Nancy I'm sorry I said information technology okay Great. thank you um, so any further discussion um, typically we would so we could just vote on the amended agenda you know, I think um, you typically, would, that, I think that'll work. So, I, I um, the agenda, agenda with, the amendment. with the amendment, right? So, um, we have a motion and a, and a second to to um, approve the amendment. Jeez, this is not a good start. Approve the agenda as amended. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I too vote aye. That motion carries. Uh, that would bring us to the consent. I'm approval for the consent agenda as presented. Gotta be fast. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the consent agenda as presented. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I, I too vote aye. That motion carries. Thank you. So now that brings us to um, page 83 in your agenda. Actually, we're not quite there yet. Um, do we know if Dr. Larson, I haven't seen him come on. Dr. Larson's not attending tonight, uh, Mayor Tab, but I am uh, willing to give a brief COVID-19 update if the rest of council would like to hear it. If you will. Yes. Okay. I figured. Apologies. Um, I do not have COVID-19, but I have been tested a few times just to make sure I don't have any coronaviruses, influenza, rhinovirus, or uh, an abundance of other things. But Nonetheless, uh, it is still cold and flu season, uh, despite all the social distancing and masks. So if you get sick, get tested. It's better to know uh, than to risk it. And either way, you have to stay home. So um, that PSA aside, as of yesterday, 249 doses of the COVID-19 COVID vaccine had been administered in Kittitas County. And that did not include today, um, this morning, they uh, get on our incident management team report announced um, they anticipated 80 to 100 additional doses distributed today. Um, so I'm sure you guys will have some questions and I'll just give a disclaimer now by saying that there's a whole branch of the Kittitas County incident management team and the KBH incident command structure working on this and a lot of people who know a lot more than me. Uh, we are still in the A1 tier. <laughs> It's primarily healthcare workers with uh, risk of exposure to COVID-19 and staff and residents of long-term care facilities. Um, you know, it really is starting to feel like the beginning of the baton pass between public health and KBH during a very long and never-ending marathon. Uh, also, another fun analogy is um, some light at the end of the tunnel. The tunnel is still very, very long. There's still a lot of it left, but we can still uh, we can see a little bit of light now at the end. Um, we are still awaiting some guidance from the state about 1B and 1C tiers uh, because we anticipate getting to those tiers sooner than later, and we're working on some plans for that. Um, so I'll pause for questions and reaction about vaccines. Just a couple other brief COVID related uh, local updates. Thanks. Council? Questions? Uh, Tristan, I heard uh, 
probably gossip. I heard we got a thousand doses of vaccine. Is that? So we got 900, 975 doses of Pfizer vaccine. So Pfizer has minimum shipments. That is the minimum shipment they can send, which makes it hard for them to distribute to small clinics and other areas. Moderna, that's now approved. I think they have 100 minimum, which will make it a little bit easier for that to go out. But yeah, we got 975. But actually, that first day, um, you know, you could, they can. There's a little extra in some of the vials um, just to deal with administration, um, administrative hiccups that might come. So uh, anyway, the moral of that story is there will be a little bit more than 975 doses probably administered from the shipment that we got because of extras from the vials, which have been approved for use. Mary. Hi, Mary. So I heard a report tonight that they are expecting the shipments to shift considerably now in the next week to two weeks that will be on a much more regular schedule and it will be so shipments will be going out a lot faster without quite the delay to, to this yeah that's what we're being told I, you know, last time we didn't know until the package had been shipped that we were for sure getting some here in Kittitas County so um we're kind of just getting ready for anything. The IMT gets regular updates. We may or may not get X number of doses um, on Y date, um, and they're just they're just ready for everything. Okay. Good. Other questions on the vaccine? <coughs> I've got one. Yep. Go, up, David. Quick question. Uh, it's not vaccine per se, but um, Tristan, could you speak briefly to the importance or the, the message that um, masking will still be required even for those who get the vaccine and certainly for those who have not been vaccinated and that's likely to take most of next year, right, to get to that point? Yeah, we anticipate masking still being a part of our 2021 reality for some time. Uh, Definitely, there was no one, uh, I had the opportunity to see the vaccine clinic, there was no one with their masks off immediately following their injection. Um, there's about estimated for the Pfizer vaccine only about 50% efficacy after the first dose. You really need that second dose to bring you up to that 94, 95%. And even then it takes about 15 days, they assume, uh, from that second dose for you to be considered immune at that point. Um, and even then, there that still means the vaccine protects you from getting COVID-19 or from developing serious illness due to COVID-19. Um, while the research is promising, it is not definitive that it is actually um, really doing much about transmission right now. So until a, a lot of people are vaccinated, the masks are on. Okay. So is that, does that mean that a person who's vaccinated is not, I mean, they may be protected from getting seriously ill, but that doesn't stop the vaccine from infecting them and also their ability to pass it on to others. Is that accurate? It's likely that it reduces transmission, but that evidence is still out. So it is better safe than sorry. And you could have COVID, vac COVID and not even know it when you get your vaccine and think that you're good to go and be um, carrying that on for a while. But there's not the, the research about asymptomatic transi transmission after you're vaccinated is still out. It's promising, but still out. So there's no evidence to say that we all get to burn our masks immediately after second dose of vaccination. Although some of our masks might need to go down that way. <laughs> Mary. Better there than in the creek. Uh, That's right. So is if we are in the age group, um, do we talk to our personal physician or do we talk to incident management regarding when we, where they think we fall in that calendar? So we always advise people to talk to their primary care provider, but not at this point to make an appointment because they're not going to know either. No. They're also waiting for I, us. I understand. Yeah. That. I yeah. Just, and when, so ones. when we get word, when we get word that we're ready for, for 1B, and I'm not sure you, well, I'll not, I'll not speak to what uh, groups I think people are in, but uh, when we get to that 1B, 
we will put out press releases as soon as we know, hey, it's time for that next step, and we'll start messaging that. And then at that point, we will know if there's, if you're going, which clinics have them, if there's uh, one clinic, like right now, there's just one vaccine hub where the healthcare providers are going, and then um, uh, national pharmacies are going to the long-term care facilities. So once we actually have them in clinics and providers have them, we know we're going into those different tiers and we know what those tiers are, still kind of waiting on the state to solidify that. Um, we'll put that messaging out right away. People will get sick of it. Hopefully everyone will know, um, even whether or not you have social media, we're gonna find a way for everyone to know uh, when it's their turn. Um, right now, most people who turn it is are hearing it from the director of their healthcare facility that they work at or the leadership at the long-term care facility where they live, something like that. Okay, thank you. Thanks. So please, next, next phase of report. Yeah. Okay, just two quick things. Um, there have been some additional deaths related to long-term care facilities. That press release went out today, as well as um, an additional death um, of a person who did not reside in a long-term care facility. Um, it did have some underlying health conditions, so um, our dashboard did go up to 26 total deaths, and we just want to acknowledge those and, um, you know, make sure we provide the condolences to the families um, and loved ones. Uh, right now, we keep having a lot of new cases every day. Um, for a while, it was lucky number 32. We kept having 32 new ones in a row. I think over the weekend, they had about 50 um, so locally, and I think Dr. Larson might have touched on this in our last meeting, locally and at the state level and many other uh, local health jurisdictions move more into an abbreviated case investigation and contact tracing method, which basically means um, we are talking to cases, we are helping them identify their contacts, and then asking them to, uh, to contact their contacts because it's no longer within the capacity of the public health system to do so. There are some exceptions of high risk places, um, situations like congregate settings and outbreaks. Um, and I'll also net, note that Central Washington University is taking over their contact tracing. The school districts are doing their own contact talk, tracing. Our, our healthcare providers are doing contact tracing. So just because it's not happening local at the public health department um, outside of these high risk scenarios doesn't mean it's not happening. But the community is going to have to. Um, take on a little bit of empowerment there and reach out to their um, contacts when they are positive. What's our infection rate this week? Kristen? That's a good question. I'm sorry, I don't know that off the top of my head. I can try to look and report back. Right. We were in the 500, 600s um, last week, but I haven't looked since. Other questions of Tristan? I uh, appreciate the update. It's good, good, concise information, clear. Thank you. It's just because I don't know as much as the dog. I don't have as much to say. Um, <clears throat> you just know different things. Um, so let's move down then to 6B. We're on uh, this is page 83 if you're in your packet. <clears throat> we have board and commission applications. We have uh, Emma Johnson, whom I saw. Um, to be introduced I, today. Yeah. How are you doing? Good, how are um, you? Good. Um, just to note, uh, Emma had initially um, applied for the Parks and Rec Commission where, where we do not, I believe, have any vacancies. And um, also to the library board and then indicated an interest in affordable housing. We do have a vacancy on the Affordable Housing Commission. So Emma, this is an opportunity just to introduce yourself to the council a little bit about yourself and perhaps why uh, you'd be interested in working on uh, uh, particularly this Affordable Housing Commission. Okay, uh, my name is Emma Johnson. I just recently graduated from Central Washington University uh, with a bachelor's in English. Um, and now I'm working as an insurance broker uh, for Hola Benefits Consulting, which is out of Cleelum. And I work a lot with um, businesses in Allensburg, so I'm working pretty locally. Um, I showed interest in the Affordable Housing Commission because I am a young 
former college student now, but um, I know how important affordable housing is, not just for college students, but also for community members who just live in this community. And um, I know that with the expanding of the college means that there needs to be more housing for college students and finding a happy medium between uh, you know, uh, college housing and apartments and things like that, and also keeping housing for just regular citizens affordable um, might become a problem as, you know, the school grows. So I just want to be part of the community and yeah. That's great. Oh, great. I appreciate that. That's, that's helpful. Um, anyone have questions of Emma? Um, seeing none. So, uh, Nancy, go ahead. Yeah, um, I, I guess it's my understanding, and Bruce, you know better than I, that, that most of the folks on the um, Affordable Housing Commission bring specific skills or experiences that um, that they that they bring to the commission. Um, and I'm hearing you say, Emma, that that you've been a student who's experienced perhaps housing shortages. Yes. Um, uh, do you have any, are there, do you have knowledge of affordable housing um, or other skills or experiences that you could bring? Um, yeah, so um, in the past couple of years, I have done a lot of community outreach and I've gotten to know a lot of um, people who have been affected by the shortage of affordable housing. Um, and so I, and I personally have experienced the shortage of affordable housing and having to uh, just kind of find what's best out there, even though it might not be suitable for me completely. Um, and along with that, I uh, did a lot of communications uh, in college. So I wrote for the um, newspaper at the college. And so I did a lot of community outreach there and um, so marketing communications, writing, things like that, I'm really good at. And uh, so, yeah, I uh, feel like I have a good sense of how to communicate with community members and hear people's stories and share my own stories and stuff like that. Thanks, that, that's great. That could be valuable. Stacy? Um, so I, I have a question for you, Emma. Um, the Affordable Housing Commission is extremely active right now. Um, our commissions tend to go kind of through waves of activity, and that right. one particularly right now is doing a lot. Um, are you aware of maybe the, the time commitment or what the expectation is, or have you talked to staff or council member Goodlow or, or anything in that regard? Yeah, so I mean, I did my uh, research when applying for the Board of Commissions, and so I'm aware of uh, the meetings and the outside of meetings, uh, time commitment and stuff like that. And other than working, you know, there's obviously not much going on. And so I figured what better time than now to, you know, get my foot in the door in the community because there's a lot of free time. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's great. I applaud your uh, willingness to engage. Thank you. Great, thanks. Um, any other questions? So basic process is we, we, uh, <clears throat> what we'll do is take until our next meeting to kind of mull this over, consider it, and then do the appointment uh, next time. You don't need to be, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't need to attend that next meeting. Right. Um, uh, but there is an opening on the commission and um, but typically we wait and then um, there may be other applications that come through at the same time because we've just begun to post that position. Um, yours was active because you had indicated that uh, interest in Parks and Rec earlier. Um, so, so it's still a process. Um, we would be looking to make a decision at the next meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate your interest and I appreciate you taking the time to Thank be with you. us this evening. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So that, 
um, that will bring us then, we're on page 87, this is 6E, uh, Ellensburg Police Department, this is Substance Abuse Disorder Partnership, um, and I know I saw Chief Wade on, yes. Good evening, Mayor Cabin Council, I'm Ken Wade, Chief of Police for the City of Ellensburg. Uh, I'm here tonight to introduce a new program directed at uh, saving lives, reducing crime, and assisting members in our community and their families who suffer from a substance abuse disorder. This program is a partnership between the Ellensburg Police Department and Dr. David Douglas. The purpose of this program is to reduce victimization in our community uh, and to save lives by providing assistance with recovery to people suffering from substance abuse disorder. Uh, in 2018, we responded to 25 overdose calls and, and one death. In 2019, we responded to 24 overdoses with two deaths. And through mid-November of this year, we've responded to 27 overdoses with four deaths. Four of, the, uh, of these deaths have been a direct result of the, the new drug, the synthetic uh, opioid uh, fentanyl coming to Ellensburg. And as you're aware, the department began carrying uh, Narcan. Uh, the Narcan is a, a overdose medication which helps with uh, opioid overdoses. And since November 2018, we've administered it eight times, uh, five times so far this year. Of those eight applications, uh, six people have survived. Um, each year, we report our crime statistics to the FBI through the National Incident Based Reporting System, or NIBRS. And this report covers the 52 most serious crimes. Uh, and in 2018, 12% uh, of those serious crimes were uh, directly related to drug addiction. 13% uh, in 2019, and we're sitting at about 10% so far this year. And we know these numbers uh, are, are not, uh, is, they're accurate as far as those 52 crimes, but in the overall scheme of, of the crimes that, that we come in contact and our overall calls, it's a, a much higher percentage. This program is directed at those in the community that are suffering from substance abuse and their families. And this program is going to provide assistance to the Ellsberg Police Department because it will give the patrol officers a, a, uh, an avenue, a place where we can make referrals. Uh, we currently do this with the uh, homeless and with, with mental health, and uh, this will just be one more tool in our belt. This isn't a repetitive program. This isn't something that anybody else is doing. Uh, it's not like the Sheriff's Department working with Dr. Israel and the chemical dependency. Um, this, this is a, a system that will help the patrol officers in the field. It's also important to, to note that uh, we are not, we as in the police department, we are not providing counseling or guidance to uh, people with substance abuse disorder. This will be a referral to an expert and the expert we're, we're proud to be teaming up with uh, in this program will be uh, Dr. David Douglas. Um, Dr. Douglas uh, is available and will provide some additional details on how this system uh, will, this project will work. Uh, Dr. Douglas. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. I have just three slides. I promise I teach for a living, so I'm gonna keep this very, very short. Uh, just give me a second here. Can everyone see that slide on the screen? Yeah, we're good. Uh, perfect, great. So I see many, uh, Mayor, Council, uh, thank you for allowing me to be here. Um, this is truly an honor for me and it's an opportunity for me to continue giving back to the community through my overall mission for the work I do in the community is helping people find a pathway to recovery from substance use disorders. Uh, a few months ago, I reached out to uh, Captain Hansberry and uh, we started a conversation and now you guys are seeing the results of those conversations. Just a brief uh, uh, bio for me, my name is David Douglas. I, my day job I say I teach at Central. I love the work I get to do up there. Part of my master's program I did research in this arena and actually created a template for a recovery community organization for campus. And then for my doctoral research, it was again all in this arena, this arena being helping people find a pathway to recovery from substance use disorders. Uh, I just finished that work and I don't know if the timing is what it is, but it is. I actually finished right when the pandemic hit. March 9th, I got my email that I was done. So whatever that means. 
Um, so I love the work I get to do in the community through my small business. I contract with the Kittitas County Health Network giving education. I'm an educator. That's what I am. And I give education on substance use disorders. I contract with the Ellensburg High School and I, I teach uh, uh, life skills and substance use disorder training for educators in Excel High School and directly to the students. So that, that's a little bit about me professionally. But the important roles for me and really for this work is in our community. I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm an uncle. Just like many of you, we have all of these roles. And these for me are the really important roles. I'm a person in long-term recovery myself, and I have the little catchphrase at the bottom, and I want everyone to really soak this in, and that is recovery works and lives do change. I used to lead a pretty different life. That picture on the left is my last booking photo from Pierce County Jail in the mid-90s. From that time to this day, because of access to resources, treatment, recovery supports, employment opportunities, housing opportunities, all of those, we call them recovery supports. Many of you know the work I do in this community and I'm friends with some of you and I, I know most of you in this room. I'm an integral part of this community. In fact, we're a family in recovery. My wife's a person in long-term recovery. My son's a person in long-term recovery. With access to treatment and recovery supports and programs like the one we're starting here, we can help our community members through treating substance use disorders like the health condition they are. So our goal with this program, what we've already done in our plan for the next six to 12 months is I've already met every officer, I've met command staff, and I've went to ship briefings, and I've already started doing ride-alongs. And that goal with going with officers on ride-alongs is to build trust, because they're the front line seeing the damage of substance use disorders on a daily basis. So I'm wanting to ride with them, build trust, and they all have my number and my email address. And if they come in contact with a person that expresses they, a need for treatment, recovery, whatever it is, they can now give them my number and call them. I'm also going to be doing trainings with, uh, in March they do uh, trainings and I'm going to give trainings in this arena of substance use disorders. There's a lot of myths in this arena about what a substance use disorder is, how someone develops a substance use disorder, what are ways we can help people. So that's our goal with this program is really to intervene at one of the best places because many people just like myself are committing, I was, right, not now, but in when I was in active addiction, low-level, nonviolent crimes, what I needed was treatment, not jail. So that's the goal of this program. I'm open up, I'm open to any questions council might have. Well, let's, uh, before we do that, let's go back to Chief Wade and if there are uh, other, what else, <clears throat> any other statements you'd like to make or now, other than the fact that we're very excited about this program, uh, we feel that it's going to help uh, with that gap uh, in service that we're providing to the community, and, and we feel that we can make a difference. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I, I would note that there's not uh, we're not being asked for action. Uh, merely this is education so that we're aware that the program's going forward. Um, Council, do you have questions? Not a question, but uh, I, I just wanted to commend both of you and the department for taking a proactive uh, approach to um, finding the root causes of crime and, and uh, reducing it that way. Um, and I, I can't say enough how impressed I am with the department um, and, and how you approach solving problems uh, for people. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Question. Um, I guess. Thank you again, I Dacko Council Member Lopez. Comment to both Dr. Douglas and Chief Way. I appreciate the effort and the commitment of the community. Um, I had a question, and I guess I'll direct it to the Chief, but anyone can take it. On the dashboard, I had. I was curious. One of the um, one of the uh, bar graphs jumped out at me. It was the overdose by drug type. And I was, my question is, the other category, uh, it may be somewhere on here, but it, it accounts for the largest number of overdoses, but I'm not clear what, what kind of drug overdose are we talking about. It may be more than one, but could you elaborate on that? They, uh, that particular uh, uh, other category is prescriptions. Oh, okay. okay. So, 
what we're finding, what we're seeing with uh, with our fentanyl is it's coming in uh, in tablet form and it's made out of Mexico or made uh, in other portions of the, of the states too. So we're seeing a lot of the pharmaceuticals and so that's what that represents. So to be clear, the fentanyl, which is listed separately, um, is that a different category of fentanyl? Or are you saying the fentanyl is mixed with? No, I, I, I was just saying it, it's the, uh, the other category is uh, drug inter or multiple drugs. Um, uh, so we'll wind up with people that have taken uh, two or three different types of medications and so, or alcohol with, with uh, uh, drugs. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thought, Any other questions or, or comments? I wanted to ask uh, Dr. Douglas a question. Uh, will you be training staff, particularly uh, patrol officers, on how to recognize uh, persons who they interact with, uh, how to recognize the drug abuse, or that something's there that makes them suspicious about that so they can contact you? or? Uh, do they already have that training? Um, um, well, two things. One, I'm sure Chief's nodding his head. They do get training on drug recognition, on how to identify. But our goal with this is really, truly, a, you know, a, a, I mean, just describe a possible scenario. Someone that they've probably come in contact with before, that individual expresses in some way, you know what, maybe I want to talk to someone. They'll give them my number. To answer your question about trainings, I, the trainings I will be doing on what it, substance use disorder is how you can talk to someone using non-stigmatizing language with a substance use disorder, how to help someone in healthy ways and unhealthy ways with the substance use disorder. Those are the types of trainings I will give. Very good. Thank you. Also about what resources we have in the community. We're actually fortunate in our city and our county. We have a lot of good resources in place. Other comments or questions? I just wanted to thank Chief Wade for uh, bringing this uh, forward to us so that we're aware and um, for always just taking a proactive approach on these type of issues and showing leadership and, you know, connecting these people that you come in contact with with the resources they need. So thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Um, I also think it's important, just as we're uh, going down to the next section of the, of the, of the agenda, to recognize <clears throat> that there are conversations um, around the country about the role of the police, that to me, and, and, and the role of policing in a community, this is an incredible proactive step that recognizes that there are resources that the police can connect people to, that they don't need to be all-knowing, they don't need to be all-wise, we just need to build the supports for our police and for those that, with whom they're coming in contact <clears throat> to find the path, into, in this case, to recovery and to the support that they need. So I, I think it's really important for all of us to recognize that <clears throat> this, is, this is an action occurring here while the conversation is still taking place in other communities that, that have not acted. And, and so, I, again, I just want to appreciate that approach recognize it and, and appreciate, uh, Dave, David, your willingness to connect and make this work uh, for this community. So thank you both and, and, and the officers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so that'll move us down, down to seven, I think, is citizen comment and non-agenda items. Uh, this is an opportunity for members of the public to comment on items that are not on our agenda. Um, when you um, are recognized, please state your name and address, whether you're speaking for yourself or others. Um, your comments will be limited to three minutes. Um, <clears throat> um, comments of, an, of a personal or impertinent or derogatory nature will not be, will, um, well, actually, we'll just stop the conversation at that point. Um, also recognize that council will not take action on any issue that's brought before us this evening uh, that's not on the agenda. So with that, um, I see one hand raised, Teresa Plute. Hello, my name is Teresa Plute, 140 Woodhouse Loop. Um, Merry Christmas to you all, it's coming up. 
And um, I was just, uh, I'm wondering if, well, let's see, I can't really ask a question, but maybe a comment after I do. Um, there was an ordinance that's being written um, uh, that you mentioned at the last meeting that will, <clears throat> that will, it's supposed to be a draft, I think, of an ordinance. Um, is that coming back to city council maybe at the next meeting? Or do you have a time frame for that, for the people who might want to log in and, uh, and see what that's about? And um, will it just be a draft or will it be voted on when it comes back? So, thank you. Uh, yeah, if, um, I think I'm comfortable just providing information on that. The ordinance is in a draft form, that's accurate. Um, it's um, under review now by the attorney. <clears throat> um, there will either be two or three opportunities to comment on the ordinance. It may come back to council um, <clears throat> without a formal, uh, for the council's sense and direction, um, where, which would mean it would still be in draft. Uh, any ordinance which we, so, so there's one, that would be the first opportunity. Second opportunity uh, would be when we actually consider the ordinance itself, we do what we call first reading. And if you look at the agenda today, we have a second reading of an ordinance. And then we will do a second reading typically um, <clears throat> at the next meeting. And that's also both of those, both the first reading and second reading would be an opportunity for public input. And I think we would also envision taking public input uh, if council decides to um, review the draft ordinance prior to directing staff to bring, you, to bring it back to us in ordinance form. Um, so there will be that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me, um, I see another hand at the uh, Shauna Kessler. Yeah, Shana Kessler, 1508 North, North B Street. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I would like to bring to council's attention that um, stickers have been found on light poles and other metal surfaces throughout town and Sioux's campus that are for the white supremacist group Patriot Front. Um, I don't know if this has been going on, but we just found these stickers throughout town over the weekend um, and several citizens have been removing them. Uh, Chief Wade, I believe, is also aware of the issue and has been taking reports and removing them as they come in. Um, but I would like council to take a firm stance against this group being in our town um, and acknowledge that we are not a place where white supremacist organizations have the freedom to move freely in our community. Thank you. Um, again, should I just say that we will not take action uh, this evening. Um, so let's go. I'm a little confused um, because I see two Stacy Hammonds. There, there was one has been plenty. Um, okay, let's let's give that. So I've got um, Stacy Hammond. Oh, yeah, no, this is me. There's only one of me. It wouldn't surprise me if people are impersonating me at this point, though. There, 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 yeah, just say that there were actually, there was somebody else that was listed as your name. That's so, funny. funny. That's funny. Well, anyway, so 308 North Sampson Street is just me here. Uh, I just want to say, first of all, I was a little frustrated, uh, Mayor, that you cut me off at last meeting. I'm not asking for an explanation, but just to say that public comment is just that. Normally we would be meeting in public places where a person can object to the point of what getting thrown out by Chief Wade, right? Isn't that the point? So I don't appreciate being muted at your whim. Uh, in my opinion, it was uncalled for. It was unprofessional and probably unconstitutional. Um, second, Nancy Goodlow last time inferred that at the very end of her statement, I believe it was her, that said that she needed to resurrect essentially this uh, Oh, a group called Not In Our Kids Ask County, and I don't know anything about this, but somebody sent me a video today, I watched it about an hour before this, where these people mentioned me by name at this organization. Her name was Erin Laulo, and she they're calling for Nancy Goodlow. Where is she? Why is she not at the meeting? And this woman accused me of, um, well, of, of quite a bit of things. I don't know who the heck she is. I have no idea who she is. 
Uh, but I don't appreciate the council linking up with organizations that then call and shame people out by name. They referred to old ladies on at least three occasions, um, which they include sexism and ageism as part of their protected classes. Uh, they accused me of, quote, not being marginalized uh, citizen, which they have absolutely no idea whether I fall into any of those protected classes they purport to uh, defend. Um, I certainly have two severely disabled children that I'm 100% responsible for until the day I die. So anyway, uh, I don't know what organization this, you know, that you're like branching out into, but I would highly suggest making sure that people like Mrs. Late Lalo, okay, also know that I know what libel is, I know what slander is, and I know how the city gets involved and coupled with it, okay? Their $694 in reserve isn't going to pay their legal bills, okay? So anyway, the other issue is $500,000 missing from the police budget. Please acknowledge that in open meeting, especially when the city's going under cyber attack immediately following a ransomware, okay? I'd like to know where the records are. I think this is highly suspect. There's a lot of litigation against the city coming, and you know it, and all of a sudden, all the records are missing. Half a million dollars are missing. The people are here, okay, and they're going to become more aware every moment. So I highly suggest that you stop linking up with organizations, okay, that are not uh, constitutional, period. Nonpartisan groups. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any, anyone else who wishes to approach council during the non or comment on non agenda items? See no one, then we'll move down the agenda. This will take us to 8A, um, a public hearing to adopt um, <clears throat> a resolution amending the city's six year transportation plan. There is a script that I need to walk through. Um, the purpose of this legislative hearing is for the City Council to consider adoption of a resolution amending the City's six-year transportation improvement plan for 2021 to 2026. Public hearing is now open. I ask for cooperation in the following. Everyone will be given an opportunity to be heard. The City Clerk will be making a recording of the proceedings. If you wish to participate in the hearing, you must raise your virtual hand on the Zoom meeting screen or press star 9 if you're connected by telephone only. Wait until um, I have recognized your request and you've been unmuted. You should then begin by stating your name and address, indicate whether you're speaking for yourself individually or as a spokesperson for a certain group or both. Speak slowly, slowly and clearly. Only one person will be allowed to speak at a time. Your testimony must only address the matter under consideration in this hearing. Any questions of staff are to be directed through the council. Each person will have an opportunity to address the council for an additional period not to exceed five minutes. If more time is needed, it will be made available after everyone has had an opportunity to speak. Before we do hear from the audience, is there a staff report to be presented? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, Mayor Council. Barrick Mayo with Gallensburg Public Work and Utilities Department. Staff recently received confirmation of two grant awards and are now uh, in need of amending uh, our six-year transportation improvement plan for the years 2021 through 2026. The six-year plan uh, needs to be amended to reflect the project is now having secured funds uh, with the grant uh, awards. Uh, the first amendment is for the construction of a traffic signal at the intersection of 14th Avenue and Alder Street. And also the project includes the extension of the Palouse to Cascades reconnection trail from this intersection south to the, uh, to the fairgrounds. Uh, the total project cost for this project is $1,610,000 with the Transportation Improvement Board grant funding $1,046,650 of that a local match of $563,580. Uh, project is planned for design in 2021 and construction in 2022. The second amendment is for the construction of a traffic signal at the intersection of University Way and Research Creek Road. This project costs uh, totals $518,500 with a federal surface transportation block grants funding $427,309. And the remaining $91,191 coming from Pittacass County. Uh, I don't know if council aware or not, but the signalization of this project was a requirement of the CEPA process with Kittitas County as part of their transfer station and public works facilities project. So they are going to cover the matching funds. Um, the design is currently complete, and staff actually just received this award last week. So if it wasn't on, we didn't give a, a notice. Uh, so we're just amending it, added, adding it to the the uh, amendment now and the resolution now. Um, design of the project is complete and uh, construction 
will likely begin this year uh, and be completed by the end of the year, depending on the lead time of the signal equipment. With that, staff recommends council conduct a public hearing and adopt the resolution amending the, the six-year transportation plan. And staff also recommends council authorize the mayor and staff to execute any and all necessary grant associated paperwork for these two projects. Thank you. Floor is now open to testimony from the public. Each person will have an opportunity to address council for an initial period not to exceed five minutes. Uh, if more time is needed, it'll be made available after everyone has had an opportunity to speak. Does anyone wish to address council over this matter? So, seeing no one, does staff have anything to add? Um, are, are there any persons who would like to offer non repetitive in, information in this matter? Sorry, I'm jumping back and forth between my attendee list. Okay, Council, then do you have any questions of staff? Seeing none. Public testimony portion of this hearing is now closed. Council may now begin its discussion and deliberation of this matter. Council. I'll move to authorize the mayor and staff to execute any and all necessary TIB and STEG grant paperwork associated with the Alder Street and 14th Avenue signalization and PC. PTC Reconnect Trail from 14th Avenue to KBC um, Project and the University Way and Research Creek Road Signalization Project. And I just, well, I'll wait for a second. I'll second. Okay, um, so we do have- Don't we need a resolution first? first? Yeah, I, if I may, got it. Um, I think what we need to do is do the okay. resolution first because that is the enabling, Mary. I move that we adopt a resolution amending the 2021 to 2026 six year transportation improvement plan. Second. Second. So we have a motion and second to um, adopt resolution 2020 37, amending the transportation improvement plan for 2021 through 2026. Mr. Mayor, that'll actually yep. be 2020 38. There was the resolution in the um, consent agenda that'll be number 37. Sorry about that. Okay, so we've got 2020-38 uh, for the same to um, for the transportation improvement plan as outlined in our uh, packet. Any further discussion on the resolution? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, I jumping ahead. That's that's fine. Um, I, I too vote aye. That motion carries. Now we do have a motion and second on the floor. To um, I'm not finding to authorize the mayor and staff to execute any and all necessary TIB and SDVG grant paperwork associated with the Alder Street and 14th Street Avenue signalization PTC. Is that going to be the new acronym? Yeah. Um, rec reconnect Trail from 14th Avenue to KVEC project at the University Way and Research Creek uh, Road signalization project. Any further discussion on the motion? Actually, that, uh, that Mayor. Yeah. That is the that is the acronym, PTC. Palooza so, Cascades. Yeah, Palooza Cascades. Yeah. Right. So I'm taking my bike out on the PTC. Don't say PCT, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. You're on the wrong trail. Okay. Uh, I just again want to commend staff for uh, getting this grant and. Uh, continuing to chip away and getting that trail built because it's it's a huge asset for the community uh demonstrated by the number of um the traffic count uh on that trail um up closer to i guess greenfield um but uh lot, lots and lots of people out using that trail thanks no. And second that. So we have the motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
the two vote aye, that motion carries. Um, thank you. So let me find, okay, here we go. For now we're at 8B, this is uh, page 97 in your packet. <clears throat> this is a public hearing to consider annexation request from Ray Weisbeck for parcels 258133018133038133 and 058133. Um, this is also, again, a public hearing. There's a script that I'll read from and then we'll go through. Very similar. The purpose of this legislative hearing is for the City Council to consider annexation. Petition P20-083 submitted by Ray Weisbeck for parcels 258-133-018-133-038-133 and 058-133 located on Cascade Street. This public hearing is now open. I ask for cooperation in the following procedure. Everyone will be given an opportunity to be heard. The city clerk will be making a recording of the proceedings. If you wish to participate in the hearing, you must raise your virtual hand on the Zoom meeting screen or press star nine if you're connected by telephone only. Wait until you have been recognized and you have been unmuted. You should then begin by stating your name and address, indicate whether you're speaking for yourself individually or as a spokesperson for a certain group or both. Speak slowly and clearly. Only one person will be allowed to speak at a time. Your testimony must only address the matter under consideration in this hearing. Any questions or staff of staff are to be directed through the council. Each person will have an opportunity to address council for an additional period not to exceed five minutes. If more time is needed, it will be made available after everyone has had an opportunity to speak. Before we hear from the audience, is there a staff report to be presented? I do have one, Mr. Mayor. Members of Council, thank you. It's Jamie Ailing with the Community Development Department. Uh, the parcels proposed for annexation, they are located on the west side of Cascade Street in the 700 block south of Dollar Way Road. Um, Per the Oldsburg City Code, annexation requests are a Type 5 process and therefore they require the legislative public hearing before the Planning Commission with their recommendation forwarded to City Council as the final decision maker. Um, if Council decides that this annexation request is approved uh, after the public hearing, we would also request the Council proceed with the first reading of the ordinance to implement the annexation request. Notice of this hearing. Uh, was published, was properly noticed, it was published in the daily record on December 5th. Property owners within 300 feet were mailed a notice of this hearing and the appropriate land use action signs were posted on the property. Uh, if you remember the initial meeting with the City Council to initiate this process was held on October 5th of, the, of 2020 and uh, was recommended to move forward after that determination to accept the annexation for proposal, uh, excuse me, a proposal of the proposal petition for annexation was then filed with the county uh, assessor's office and they affirmed on the 15th that it was sufficient in regard to the legal description and that we did have the proper owners of record signature. Uh, the planning commission then held their public hearing on November 12th of 2020 and at that planning commission meeting, the planning commission did question um, the simultaneous adoption of the residential suburban zoning on this particular annexation. The majority of residential zone properties in West Ellensburg, they are zoned residential low and the commission, commission felt these properties should be zoned accordingly as RL as well. Um, the planning commission unanimous, unanimously recommended council approve the annexation request as presented with the adoption of residential low zoning rather than residential suburban. Uh, two of the parcels are currently served with city utilities. They have a house on one and a duplex recently constructed on the other. The other two parcels are uh, not connected to city utilities, but they are available. Um, the parcels are bordered on all sides uh, by city limits. So it's an island of county jurisdiction moment and um, so annexation of this parcel of these four parcels is definitely a logical extension of the city boundaries it gets rid of an island that we have um, staff however does uh, differ from the planning commission uh, we still recommend the rs residential suburban zoning for this property um, it is consistent with the comprehensive plan that's uh, blended residential neighborhood in the comp plan 
and uh, the the same zoning exists to the south of this property. There is most of West Ellensburg is RL, but the adjacent properties to the south of this one are RS. Uh, another uh, point of why staff would recommend the RS is that the location and proximity to Dollar Way does open up the potential for some limited small scale retail that is not allowed in the RL zone and because of the surroundings if it's determined that the applicant does not want to continue with building houses and duplexes up that street and the nature of the roadway that is Dollar Way um, it's fitting that the RS uh, designation would allow for the flexibility of the small scale retail. So with that in mind, uh, staff would recommend that you approve the annexation request for the four parcels located on Cascade Street with simultaneous adoption of residential suburban zoning. Conduct a first reading of the ordinance that is attached to your packet and if the ordinance is approved for first reading, schedule a public hearing for a city council's regular meeting on February 1st. 2021 to consider the second reading and adoption of said ordinance. So that I can stand with any questions. Great, thank you. Um, before we do, let's go. Um, the floor is now open to testimony from the public. Each person will have an opportunity to address council for an initial period not to exceed five minutes. Um, if more time is needed, it'll be made available after everyone has had an opportunity to speak. Um, does anyone wish to address council over this matter? See no one. Um, <clears throat> it does staff have anything to add? I have nothing further at this point, Mayor. Thank you. Um, um, is there anyone in the audience who would like to add any non repetitive information or evidence about this matter? See no one. Uh, do you have any questions, Council? Do you have any questions of staff or the public? Seeing none, the public testimony portion of this hearing is now closed. Council may now begin the discussion and deliberation of this matter. Council. I'll move that we approve annexation request P20-083 for parcels 258133-018133-038133 and 058133. Located on Cascade Street in simultaneous adoption of residential suburban zone. Second. So we do have a motion and second to uh, approve the annexation request P20-083 for parcels 258133-018133-038133 and 058133 located on Cascade Street and simultaneously adopt a residential suburban zone. Is, are there further any further questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, aye. I, too vote, I too vote aye. That motion carries. <coughs> um, aye. Awesome. Sorry. So then we would uh, entertain a motion to conduct first reading of the enabling ordinance, which would be 4867. Unless I saw comes in. Second. Um, so we have a motion second to conduct first reading of ordinance uh, 4867 yeah, um, and ske schedule a public, no, wait a minute, let's do that. So I'm a little confused, but let's, let's. Um, I believe we're conducting the first reading of the ordinance. Yeah, we are. I, I'm just um, kind of looking at it. Okay, so let's conduct, Let's. we have a motion second to conduct first reading of ordinance 4867. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. I too vote aye. That motion carries. I'm a little confused because typically we would not set a public hearing for a second reading. So, due to the nature, sorry, Mayor, it's Jamie with the Community Development Department. Due to the nature of it being a legislative hearing for annexation, there's a language within the uh, RCW that states we have to set a second reading public hearing uh, no less than 30 days, not more than 60 days, I believe it is. So we do have to set a second hearing to have the second reading for this particular annexation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
for their clarification. I move, that we, I move that we schedule a public hearing for the City Council's regular meeting on February 1st, 2021 to consider second reading and adoption of the ordinance. Second. Third motion and second to, uh, to schedule a public hearing at the Council's regular City Council's regular meeting on February 1st, 2021 to consider second reading and adoption of the of Ordinance 4867. Uh, is there any further discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Two vote aye. Uh, that motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Um, you want me to read the vote the ordinance? Yeah, not really, but go ahead. <laughs> Ditto. <Yeah>. An ordinance <laughs> of the City of Ellensburg, Washington, annexing parcels 258-133-018-133-038-133 and 058-133 to the City of Ellensburg, Washington, assigning residential suburban zoning classification, providing for the assumption of existing city indebtedness, and fixing a time when the same shall be effective. Thank you. You just didn't want to see indebtedness. Um, 8C, then, is page 121 in our packet. This also is a public hearing, um, and as, as again, I will need to just uh, go through the script. So the purpose of this legislative hearing is for the City Council to consider annexation petition P20-088 submitted by Monica Pearson for parcel 10876 located north of Sanders Road. The public hearing is now open and I ask your cooperation in the following procedure. Everyone will be given an opportunity to be heard. The city clerk will be making a recording of the proceedings. If you wish to participate in the hearing, you must raise your virtual hand on the Zoom meeting screen or press star nine if you're, if you're connected by telephone only. Wait until you have been recognized and, and you have been unmuted. You should then begin by stating your name and address and indicate whether you're speaking for yourself individually or as a spokesperson for a certain group both. Speak slowly and clearly. Only one person will be allowed to speak at a time. Your testimony must only address the matter under consideration of this hearing. Any questions of staff are to be directed through the council. Each person will have an opportunity to address council in an initial period not to exceed five minutes. If more time is needed, it will be available after everyone has an opportunity to speak. Before we hear from the audience, is there a staff report to be presented? There he is. Mayor, members of council, this is Jamie Ailing, Community Development Department. Uh, this is going to be very much a repeat of the last item, but it's a different annexation. This parcel proposed for annexation is located at 1215 Sanders Road on the north side of Sanders Road, generally east of Alder Street and west of Look Road. It's kind of a big description there. Uh, per the Ellensburg City Code, annexation requests are a type 5 process and do require the legislative public hearing before the Planning Commission, but their recommendation forwarded to City Council is the final decision maker. Uh, if you choose to uh, approve this annexation request, it would, it would request that uh, Council proceed with the first reading of the ordinance to implement the annexation request. Uh, notice of this hearing was also properly noticed. It was published in the daily record on December 5th. The property owners within 300 feet did receive their mailing and land use action sign was posted on the property. Uh, this initially came to council also on October 5th, 2020, where it was uh, the determination was made to accept the annex annexation proposal and the petition was then submitted to staff. We submitted that to the assessor, that Kittitas County assessor who certified this uh, petition. There was only one property owner, so it was a fairly simple process. The Planning Commission held their public hearing on November 12th to consider the petition for annexation, and at that meeting, um, they unanim unanimously recommended council approve the request for annexation as presented. Um, the Proposed parcels currently are not served by city utilities. However, they are available down in Sanders Road. Uh, further development of that property would necessitate the uh, extension of those utilities. Uh, the parcel is bordered by the city limits on the south side of this particular parcel. Everything south of it is within the city limits currently. And it uh, is also zoned residential suburban. Uh, annexation of this parcel is a logical extension of our boundaries. It is in our urban growth area and it is adjacent to city limits. So staff 
also would recommend residential suburban zoning for this parcel proposed be annex. Um, it is supported by the industrial residen residential designation in the comprehensive plan. And it also happens to lie within zone six of the airport overlay, which will further restrict uh, development of that property to, uh, to a maximum of six lots being able to be created out of that if they ever chose to break it down that far. So um, with that, staff would recommend that council approve the annexation request for parcel 10876 and conduct a first reading of the ordinance that is attached to your packet. And if the ordinance is approved, the first reading schedule a public hearing for city council's regular meeting on February 1st, 2021 to consider the second reading and adoption of the ordinance. Thank you. Uh, floor is now open to public testimony from the public. Each person will have an opportunity to address council for an initial period not to exceed five minutes. If more time is needed, it will be made available after everyone has had an opportunity to speak. Does anyone wish to address council over this matter? Seeing no one, does uh, staff have anything to add? I have nothing further. Is anyone? <clears throat> is there anyone in the audience who would like to have non-competitive information or evidence about this matter? Yeah, seeing no one. Um, council, do you have questions of staff? Yes, I have a question for you, Jamie. Although it looks like all the properties in the general vicinity have uh, the same zoning of RF, the land use designation map shows two different types. What's the reasoning there? Um, I'm on page 130. I apologize. Mine, I printed off just that particular one and it renumbers them. So. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, it's exhibit three. Okay. The future land use designation map? Correct. So the property that you're speaking of is, uh, and I can pull it up if you need me to, but so you're talking about the pink to the east of this property that's mixed business park or the industrial res residential. It makes sense to me why we would have something different south of Sanders that feels a little bit different. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't understanding why the stuff north of Sanders has different land use designations. Any well, as you idea? Get, as you get further north, you get closer to the airport. Okay. And so that's where you pick up the industrial piece. And that's the, that's not the zoning, it's the, the comprehensive yeah. plan designation. So. Okay, so kind of the circle that surrounds the airport, you think probably tapers off at the edge of the green there? Yeah, it, it does a kind of a bullseye type effect. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions of staff? <clears throat> the public testimony portion of this hearing is now closed. Council may now begin discussion and deliberation of this matter. Council. I move that we approve annexation request P20-088 for parcel 10876 located north of Sanders Road, and simultaneous adoption of residential suburban zoning. Second. Your motion second to approve the annexation request P20, <coughs> excuse me, 088 for parcel 10876 located north of Sanders Road, and simultaneous adoption of residential suburban zoning. Um, further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I, I do vote aye. That motion carries. Um, that would bring us to then to conduct a motion to conduct first reading of ordinance 4868, uh, the enabling ordinance for that action. So moved. Second. 
Third motion and second to conduct first reading of ordinance 4868, the enabling legislature or ordinance for the annexation <clears throat> as outlined. Uh, further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I two vote aye. That motion carries. If the clerk would like to read the order. No. Okay then. Moving along. Yes, I would definitely I, love to read that. Don't we have to schedule a hearing? Yeah, we want to do the read. Let's do the reading first, uh, then we can schedule okay. a public hearing. Uh, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Ellensburg, Washington, annexing parcel 10876 to the City of Ellensburg, Washington, assigning residential suburban zoning classification, providing for the assumption of existing city indebtedness, and fixing the time when the same shall be effective. Right, thank you. Yes. So then, um, I would entertain a motion to schedule a public hearing at a regular council meeting on February 1st, 2021, to consider second reading and adoption of the of ordinance 4868. So I so move. We have a motion and second, second. to, I, I think we, okay, well, anyway, we have a motion and second to conduct, uh, to schedule a public hearing to consider second reading and adoption of Ordinance 4868, enabling annexation ordinance. Uh, further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, <clears throat> I too vote aye. That motion carries. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, that brings us then to our introduction and adoption of ordinances and resolutions. This is nine nine A is ordinance forty eight sixty six, uh, second reading of the amending the twenty nineteen twenty twenty biennial budget. We're on page one forty two. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. I'm Keith Bassett with the city's finance department. The ordinance before you this evening for second reading primarily updates the budget to reflect the COVID-19 impacts on city operations and capital project timing uh, in 2020. Uh, this includes cancellation of specific recreation programs, modifications to ensure city programs were delivered safely, addition of grant funded projects and programs, and moving forward of unspent capital project budget appropriations. Additionally, this ordinance incorporates budget impacts uh, as identified in prior council action, such as contract awards for the North Campus Signalization Project and the Core Street Heater uh, projects. The ordinance also includes carry forward from 2019 for pool boiler uh, replacement funds uh, for anticipated employee leave payouts and anticipated healthcare costs. Uh, in light of the city's current cyber event, additional expenditure authority is requested to allow for outside assistance with the IT investigation and remediation. As staff has identified sufficient fund balance exists in the risk management fund. Staff requests a motion to amend Exhibit B uh, to increase the supplemental expenditure authority in the risk management fund by $250,000 to a total, uh, excuse me, I don't have that total in front of me. Um, uh, upon adoption of the uh, amendment, staff recommends conducting second reading and adoption of for ordinance 4866 as amended. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, council. I move we conduct second reading and adoption of ordinance 4866, amending the 2019-2020 biennial budget. Did I get it right or did I? Yeah, Mr. I Mayor, think so. I think that, uh, yeah, that, that Keith was requesting an amendment to the ordinance before it is adopted. Keith, you want to restate that, please? Oh. Uh, yes, yeah, so I believe it would be um, a motion to amend exhibit B to increase the expenditure authority in the risk management fund by $250,000. So before we entertain that motion, um, and we need, the resolution that we added, I'm a little confused. I'm trying to find process. it too. Yeah, so the budget authority uh, is 
separate from the contracting and signature authority that I believe is in the resolution that's been added. The budget authority is the dollars to fund those um, decisions if they're if it reaches that point. So help me again. So okay. So there, if we don't approve the resolution, then you have no. I'm confused that if the resolution, it seems to me that we should be addressing the resolution then first. If that's the, the policy, then, then I'm sorry, go ahead, Terry. Yeah, I, if you don't approve the resolution, the, there's still budget authority, it just means it would have to go through the bid process. Um, the resolution is simply to allow a waiver of, of any bid requirements there may be for expenditures that would be required before the end of the year. Oh, okay. Okay. So then what we'll do, so we, um, so I entertain a motion to, for an amendment to the um, ordinance and biennial, 2019-2020 biennial budget for so, expanded spending authority. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. So did, did the, did the motion to put the, uh, the original on the floor as second reading, get a second, and then we can amend from there, or? Well, that's what I'm confused. I, I'm, process. My process is confused here. But so, me, so I would second Mary's motion, and then that puts the main, the main ordinance on the floor, and then we can amend, um, offer, and then I will offer an amendment. Okay. So we have motion second um, to consider second reading and adoption of ordinance 4866, amending the 2019-2020 biennial budget. Is there any further, any discussion? So I'll, I'll move uh, to amend the original motion uh, to amend exhibit B uh, to add $250,000 to the risk management line. I'll second that. Um, so we have, a, we have a, a motion and second to amend Exhibit B, providing spending authority an, an increased spending authority up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the risk management pool. Is that brilliant? or fund, Mr. Mayor? Risk management fund. And it, it increases the amount in the exhibit by two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So. Do we have a motion? Is there a motion second on the amendment? Um, further, dis any any discussion? I have a question on process. Does this still go through a second reading if we make amendments now? No. No. So how does that work? We amended a, we, at second reading, We you can amend an ordinance at first reading and or second reading. <clears throat> and once you've amended the ordinance at second reading, it's the adopted ordinance. So we do have a motion and second for the, on the amendment, uh, increasing spending of spending authority within the risk management fund. Further discussion on the amendment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I two vote I two vote aye, that motion carries. We now have a uh, motion on the floor to conduct second reading um, of ordinance 48, 40, 4866 as amended. Um, any further discussion? Uh, if the clerk would call the roll. Tingle? Aye. Goodlow? Aye. Lamb? Aye. Lilquist? Aye. Miller? Aye. Morgan? Aye. Tab? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, the clerk would read the ordinance. An ordinance amending the 2019-2020 biennial budget of the City of Ellensburg as set forth in ordinance number 4815 and subsequently amended as set forth in ordinance 4831, ordinance number 4841, and ordinance number 4852 to adjust appropriations in the city's funds. Great, thank you. We're now at 9B. This is 152, resolution for allocation of 2021 lodging tax funds. City Manager's Office, 
The city previously entered into an interlocal agreement with Kittitas County for a countywide consolidated process for distribution of lodging tax funds for special events and projects. Based on this interlocal agreement, the city's funding amount for 2021 is $46,800, which has been included in the 2021-2022 biennial budget. The consolidated group met on November 20th to hear the applicant presentations and make recommendations for funding. There were 30 applications that were received totaling $412,677.97. The consolidated group recommended allocating $219,244.99. Uh, the city's funding allocation of the $46,800 is noted in the resolution and staff recommends council adopt the proposed resolution approving the allocation of the 2021 lodging tax funds in the amount of $46,800. Thank you. Council, questions? I, I have a question. Is the 46,800 based on the 2020 uh, receipts? Okay, that's what I, I thought. Um, no, I, well, but it was based yes, on, on the projection. Yeah, the proposed revenues for 2021, which was 360,000. Okay, so the agreement was 13% of uh, a proposed a projection of what we will take in a projection of what we will take in in 2021 correct mm -hmm. yes okay thanks okay so then uh council i'd questions? like to speak to this just briefly um, sure. um i want to say that um as you all know i kind of fell off the calendar at that point and I, I really want to say my thank you to Matt um, and to Steve from the, well, anyway, two of our people that were on there because they went to the whole eight-hour thing with the county, and I couldn't have been there. And I'm really grateful to them for that effort. And uh, Matt's report back to the committee was really helpful. Um, so, but it's it's an arduous effort. And I, I, we're looking now for two more people to be on the commission who are, who represent people who receive money from the lodging tax. So that's what we're looking for. Anyway, um, I'm in favor of this, so. Thanks, Mary. Um, so oh, and Lori gets a big hand, too. Couldn't no. have done it without her. So let's, um, we did need a motion um, for the resolution, then, if there's no more. Well, no I'll, I'll move the adoption of proposed resolution, I believe it's 2020-39, uh, approving the allocation of the 2021 lodging tax funds in the amount of $46,800. Second. We have a motion and second to um, adopt resolution 2020-39, uh, <clears throat> um, approving the allocation of 2021 lodging tax funds in the sum of $46,800 $46, uh, as indicated in our packet. Um, further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I, I, I too vote aye. That motion carries. Thank you. Um, that brings us then to new, the new 9C. This is an emergency resolution uh, related to the IT uh, and, and uh, attack on our systems. Mr. Mayor, uh, Council, as you're aware, uh, we're the subject of a cyber uh, attack that um, we're still being, we're still attempting to assess the the impact of. 
Uh, it's clear at this time that all city departments are impacted by the TAC, uh, including administrative and financial services and the city utility billing system. Uh, in anticipation of uh, probable uh, needed expenditures to recover, uh, we have prepared a uh, resolution that's, uh, that was sent to you by email th this afternoon. Um, and that resolution essentially uh, provides us the ability to access the, <coughs> excuse me, the material and services necessary uh, for the recovery process. So the action that's uh, requested of you is to adopt the emergency resolution uh, giving us that authority. And with that, I'd be glad to uh, respond to questions. And Terry also uh, uh, will have input on the drafting of the resolution if, uh, if there are questions in that in that regard. Thank you. Uh, Council. I'll move the adoption of resolution 2020-1. 40, um, declaring an emergency. Second. So motion second to adopt uh, resolution 2020-40, uh, declaring an emergency related to the ransomware attack. Um, is there further discussion? Just, just to note that this is giving us flexibility to address the, the potential impacts. We do have um, umbrella insurance, which protects us to some extent in attacks of this type. Um, but at this point, it's still the piece of being able to assess what the impact of the, of the <coughs> attack is um, and what it's going to take to get the city back up and running in a way that, uh, that still works for us. Is there... Um, Okay, so we do have motion and second on the floor of, for resolution 2020-40. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Two vote aye. That motion carries. Thank you. Um, and thank you, John and Terry and uh, Ben, folks in IT. Um, this is not, cannot have been an easy day at any level. Um, so I appreciate getting this in front of us so that we have the flexibility to deal with it and um, hopefully be able to move through it. Um, that, that does bring us to um, um, un, let's go to new business. This is 11A. We're on 156. Thank you, Mayor. Members of Council, this is Jamie Ailing with the Community Development Department. And what I have before you is a little bit of exciting news um, from our front with the Affordable Housing Commission. It's a recommendation on sales tax funding and city property contribution for affordable housing. Um, on October 22nd of this uh, year, the city received an application from Habitat for Humanity of Seattle King County requesting acquisition of city surplus property and also $765,000 in affordable housing sales tax funds to develop 18 single family dwellings, uh, providing home ownership opportunities for low income families. The city surplus property that they're requesting is located at the north intersection of Bender and Water Street. Uh, the Habitat application that's being presented to council in this packet was part of an open application process uh, prior Applications went through an RFP process, but this is through an open-ended uh, application process that we have now started. Uh, for the guidance of council and the open application process, the Affordable Housing Commission reviewed this application at the December 2nd, 2020 meeting. Uh, they determined it was consistent with RCW 82-14-530 and that the funding would be allocated to projects that create new affordable housing in Ellensburg. Um, and the costs would include costs that were associated with property acquisition, construction, and rehabilitation for projects that serve target population groups 60% or less AMI. Um, the other piece of this uh, on the property act was uh, surplusing of the property in that acquisition. The city is authorized to transfer that surplus property 
um, four affordable housing development proposals that serve residents earning 80% or less AMI. Um, that Bender Road property was considered for surplus at your December 16th, 2019 meeting, so about a year ago, and council took the appropriate action approving a resolution to declare that property a surplus at the January 6th, 2020 council meeting. Um, this, habit, this particular habitat application, it, it did indicate that they will be able to provide three of the housing units to, for families at 60% AMI and the other 15 housing units will serve 80% AMI. So there's a total of 18 units, they're all uh, almost 1,300 square foot units that are three bedroom, uh, one and a half bath with some flexibility built into those housing to I use them as all bedrooms or two bedrooms in an office or potentially uh, move it around to have a couple, two bathrooms, two full bathrooms. Um, so there is flexibility built into that. This is a home ownership project. And so Habitat seeks not only to meet the current needs of the community, but plans for those in the future. This thing will be uh, a project that will be within the land trust for over 99 years and they will have the first right of refusal on any sales so they can assure that it will stay as an affordable uh, housing project. Uh, the Affordable Housing Commission is forwarding a recommendation to council to award both funding and acquisition of the city surplus property to this project as it was submitted by Habitat for Humanity and develop an agreement for the distribution of funds. Uh, due to the, the nature of this, beast here that the, the different qualification standards for donation of property versus donation of funding and uh, and all the other moving pieces with this having to subdivide the property put improvements in construct road improvements it's going to be pretty complex and um, will require multiple agreements that might take a few months to negotiate habitats overall plan is to have this constructed they want to start to finish they, they anticipate it taking two years to get the 18 houses constructed it'll just kind of be an ongoing rolling three-phase project with six units at a time um, just so that they can supplement their their funding and um, so the the physical impact of the city will be the seven hundred sixty five thousand uh, dollars from the affordable housing fund and also the uh, disposition of the of the surplus property. So what I would recommend is that the council authorize the mayor's signature on the award letter to Habitat for Humanity, Seattle King County and provide staff direction to initiate contract negotiations with Habitat for Humanity, Seattle King County. Thank you. Um, Council questions. Um, I would note uh, Patrick Sullivan is also on the call here. Uh, Patrick is the, I think, the director of development for K uh, King County Habitat. Um, so if there are um, questions of uh, specific to the project, I think Patrick is in a good position to do that. He's also probably just fine with waving at us and not having to speak. <laughs> um, but uh, so just uh, questions. So I have a question on the funding. Uh, this the three the seven hundred sixty five thousand is for the whole project, and I, I would assume a portion of that will be taken out for those three houses, or is it going to be used for all eighteen houses? And I know you probably figured this out. I just so if I may, this was reviewed by the commission also, and it was part of the application. Um, in essence, what's occurring is that the city's affordable housing money is purchasing three homes on the contributed land. The 765000 then for the affordable housing money is going into those three specific homes, which gives us the 60% AMI on three houses. The rest is a braided, braided funding, uh, housing trust fund, and I mean, there was the, the funding itself was articulated in the, uh, in the packet. It was presented, um, but I think that's the, the, the simplest way that I've come to grips with it is the affordable housing money is buying three houses, which gets us to 60%. The rest, <clears throat> or King County Habitat, 
is using their skills and knowledge that they built up over the years of both managing community land trust and development um, to bring those threads of funding in for the 80% area median income and the other 15 units. Well, that's, that seems like a lot of money for three houses. We're subsidizing it to get it to 60% AMI. I mean, you can argue it or not, honestly. No, I just, so, I'm not arguing. That must involve more than just building costs. Is that um, we're building, again, there was a budget that was presented in the packet. If you want to go through that, we can go through that. But there, the underlying piece in nonprofit housing development is that to get to affordable housing, and fundamentally, you are going to subsidize the bill to the extent that allows the mortgage then to come down to the range that are that eligible people can afford. And in essence, that's I mean, I, I don't have a, I mean, what uh, Patrick I, or hey, Jamie, the selling price of the mortgage, the mortgage, in the, if you look in your packet, I think the mortgage for the 60% AMI is one help me here. I, is, is less than what the bill is, in yeah. essence. I think it's 170 something, 179. That might be, that might be the 80% AMI. Um, <clears throat> but in essence, what you're doing is, you're, yeah, we're subsidizing a bill so that the mortgage can come out to be affordable for those people at the 60% AMI or 80% uh, area median income. Same way, that, same way that the Housing Trust Fund is doing that. Same way that um, Hope Source is. <clears throat> if, you act, if you look at the, the agreement that we just signed for their contract and, and divide the, the cost into the units, the units are typically more than, than it's costing, um, than what the rent will cover. If you were servicing straight debt. Yeah. Other questions? Sorry, Jamie, I mean, you can jump in any point. But, I have and, a, and, 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 go ahead, Nancy. Uh, I have a question. Um, at one point, I believe Habitat for Humanity had a mentoring program for new uh, homeowners. Uh, and um, I'm wondering if they still do. Um, that was considered fairly valuable for um, making sure the properties are well kept and good neighbors? They do. They have a, a required home ownership class that they go through. They also are required to put in a certain number of hours of sweat equity. And there is also going to be a homeowners association because there are some common areas within the development. So um, all of those are still in place and something that they are proud of and does work well. Thank you. And I'd also just note the community land trust model that's being proposed is one that empowers those folks in in that development. <clears throat> to, uh, so there's there's also I think a mutual support network that begins to build uh, within there within that model. Other questions. Council? Oh. You're muted. Nancy Goodlow, you're muted. Okay, I'll move to authorize the mayor's signature on the word letter to Habitat for Humanity, Seattle King County and provided staff direction to initiate contract negotiations with Habitat for Humanity, Seattle, King County. Second. So we do have a motion and second to authorize Mayor's signature on the award letter to Habitat for Humanity, Seattle, King County and provide direction, staff direction to initiate the contract negotiations with Habitat for, um, for the project as outlined. Um, any further discussion? I would just, again, I'd note, um, I, I want to appreciate, uh, recognize the work that Jamie's put into this to get it in front of us. And I want to recognize Patrick and the, your team um, 
for really working, to, for putting a project that met the needs of this community relative to other, perhaps other projects that you've done. Uh, we've had conversations that led to this, um, and I would only indicate that you've been more than uh, responsive to recognizing both the limitations and, and the need in this community. Uh, and we're, we're really excited, I, I'm really excited to be moving forward with this, and I, uh, just in editorial, I was part of the Community Land Trust that was initially looking to have that property, uh, and it, it is beyond uh, exciting for me to, to know that we're going to have a community land trust in this in this community um, that really does uh, ensure uh, affordability for folks, builds equity and afford and affordability. It's just I think a really great great project for us to be engaged in. I appreciate uh, being able to work with you on this. So thank you. Um, okay, we do have a motion in sec second on the floor. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I too vote aye. That motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, we're done now, Jamie. You're good. <laughs> um, so, um, and Patrick, I did still want to talk to you about a school program, but that's another comment. Um, let's go on down then to uh, the manager's report. We're on 214 in your packet. Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, just a, a notice of holiday closures, City Hall, um, the Ellensburg Library, and the Police Department uh, will be closed on both Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, and uh, on Christmas Day and New Year's Day, the 24th, 25th, and 31st and 1st uh, for the holidays. Um, the Kittitas Valley Memorial Pool and Fitness Center is going to be closed. Uh, they're planning to do the, or the maintenance that they ordinarily do over rodeo weekend, uh, and they will be closed beginning on December 24th and reopening on January 4th. And then the uh, Stan Bassett Youth and Community Center will be closed from the 21st of December uh, to the 3rd of January. Um, the the only other uh, issue that I have to report on that uh, that isn't included in the written report. Uh, is an issue related to the uh, West Ellensburg Park lights. Uh, at a, a, a two, two council meetings ago, you authorized a contract for the installation and purchase of the, uh, the lights for that facility. Uh, unfortunately, at the time that that was before you, it provided the amount of, uh, of funding necessary to fund the project, but did not include uh, sales tax uh, there is sufficient budget within the, the, the council's adopted budget uh, to fund the entire property or project, including sales tax, and we're going to move uh, forward uh, with that uh, based on my ability to uh, to increase the funding uh, bring to the project. Um, but I wanted to make you aware there's no action that's required of you, but wanted to make you aware of that uh, that change. And then finally, um, with respect to the, um, the executive session that's uh, provided for in your agenda packet, we do need to have a uh, discussion on uh, several items uh, under the authority of RCW 4230-110, sub one, sub I. Uh, we need to discuss uh, uh, legal, with legal counsel representing us uh, the matters related to uh, agency enforcement actions. Uh, the uh, the second issue is uh, per RCW 4230-140 uh, to consider issues related to collective bargaining uh, agreements. And then finally, um, RCW 4730-110 sub 1 sub S sub B to consider information regarding the infrastructure and security of com computer and telecommunication network uh, facilities. So uh, those three items, we anticipate a, a total of 30 uh, minutes, or excuse me, 20 minutes, and uh, no action is expected to follow. Great, thank you. So we'll do council reports first. I do want to just ask you while you're still on, uh, just your camera just died. 
is it intentional that there is a golf course behind you as we begin to recruit to replace you? Um, actually, no. Um, because, <laughs> because our um, our situation, our computer system uh, became uh, a little bit challenging later uh, earlier this evening. Um, I ended up at, at my house uh, instead of in my office, and you don't want to see what's behind me. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's do council reports. We start with Mary. Do you have one? Yet? Um, did a, you did a great job of uh, summarizing the L tag. I just have one thing, and well, two things, so to speak. Um, I have not been good about attending the meetings of the forest, because the community forest program and the parks and whatever program. Um, I I just can't do those meetings. They're too long and. Um, frankly, I, the timing on them is horrible. It's the wrong time of day for me. It really chews up hole in my day. Um, so I wanted you to know that I'm going to withdraw from both of those appointments. I don't know that their regular council appointments are sort of liaison. Nancy's still going, I think, to both of them. Um, if somebody else wants to step in, that's fine with me. I, Right now, I'm just not able to attend any more meetings. I can't add anything more on. <clears throat> and it will probably be four to five months before I'm back at speed. Thank you. Nancy, are you, are, the community forest is a pretty exciting concept. I don't yeah, I, I've been quite involved in that, um, and I was going to report on that. They, um, they are... Uh, looking at different ownership models and also really trying to pin down um, a budget to make sure that um, it, it is a sustainable project over time. Uh, so uh, that, that's kind of where the, the work has, has been um, in addition to some, uh, they, they put out some grant proposals as well. Um, and I, I'm interested in that and, and have been engaged. The recreation forum, uh, I have been kind of monitoring their minutes, but haven't attended so much. Um, that that project is um, more, um, it's a coalition of folks who want to support uh, volunteering on public lands to help build trails, pick up litter to do to do the kinds of things that the uh, forest and range land managers um, feel that need to be done. And so it, it's uh, different recreation groups uh, supporting um, those kinds of projects. And so I'm just kind of monitoring that, but not truly engaged. Um, moving on in my report, uh, I... Um, the Airport Advisory uh, Commission is reorganized to seven members. Uh, I was appointed to that new board, um, and I have been engaged in that the strategic plan that is ongoing. And um, so, if anyone has thoughts, uh, uh, I know some of you have been on that Airport Advisory Commission before about the mission and uh, vision for uh, the airport and for the industrial park, um, please let me know and I will pass those thoughts along. Um, yeah, and, just Nancy, just to know, I know Stacy was pretty engaged when they were not so focused. Yeah, um, um, and not not just council, I'm inviting citizens to so contact yeah, me no, that's a great have, point. Um, uh, thoughts. That, that you want to be incorporated um, to the airport. Um, the Developmental Disabilities Advisory Commission is recruiting um, new members. Uh, the uh, Utility Advisory 
commission, we, we discussed our energy conservation programs um, for, for next year uh, that will come back to the council, um, I believe. Uh, but essentially, continuing as, as we have with a contract with Hope Source, uh, 75000 from uh, light and seventy five from uh, gas for uh, energy conservation um, rebates for more efficient appliances and stuff. Um, but I also attended a broadband webinar, which I um, passed along to you guys, the slideshow, and, and, and that if you have, um, well, if, if a couple of you, but not more than two, have <laughs> questions on that, um, I'd be happy to talk with you about um, uh, the, what that was about. So that is all I have. Great. Thank you. Um, David, you want to go? Yeah, I'll go. So I attended uh, COG, uh, Landmarks and Design, and the Homeless Supportable Housing, Homeless and Supportable Housing Committee's meetings virtually. Um, I also wanted to, I need to request an excused absence for the January 4th meeting. Um, we have some family medical issues. If I can get that, I would appreciate it. If not, then I'll just be unexcused. <laughs> I'll move to excuse David for next meeting. I'll second that. Motion second to, uh, for uh, Council Member Miller to, for an excused absence on the January 4th meeting. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. I too vote aye. aye. That carries. Thank you. Yeah, the caveat is I, if, if there's a remote possibility I can attend remotely, and so I'll just wait, I'll just call in. Um, I was going to also um, uh, follow up with uh, Tristan's comment earlier about the uh, COVID testing, uh, and I will say from personal experience that uh, I too uh, had my first COVID test this last week at the clinic, uh, KDH clinic over the Old Valley Clinic building. In fact, my entire family did. Uh, and I just want to say thanks to everyone who has anything to do with that. Um, it was, I was impressed beginning to end, uh, very efficient going in, the testing, very efficient, and had the results back within two days, two to three days. So thank you, and I hope, I hope I don't have to do that again. But that was, uh, I was, I was very impressed with the entire operation. And I also just wanted to acknowledge, um, the, uh, we have, we lost somebody in Ellensburg this last week. Um, many of you know Gretchen Thatcher. And I just want to say, I didn't know Gretchen very well, but she was the kind of person that I knew her through her planning commission work. We were seeing her around town. And, you know, I never once had a conversation with, with her where I didn't come away feeling better. She's such a light. And uh, I just want to thank offer both condolences, but also thank her husband, Gordon, and her entire family for um, with um, She really did make Ellensburg a better place, and we're going to miss her. Yeah. That's all I thought. Thanks, Steve. Um, so, I'll just add, yeah, yeah. Gretchen was on uh, um, the non-motorized uh, commission that I led um, many years ago before she joined the planning commission, and um, was was very helpful on on the commission and always had good thoughts great thanks um how about stacy uh so i attended planning commission um i feel like the although meetings are long the meeting minutes kind of give you the the low down there so um the Parks and Rec Commission uh, will be putting out the survey for the new downtown park naming uh, after the first of the year. So if we can spread that far and wide um, and get a broad response, it's always great when we really have an opportunity to hear from a large segment of the community versus just a couple submissions. Um, and then for the um, EBDA doing business with Centerfuse, 
they are starting a campaign. They wanted to inform the council about they were unable to uh, come to this meeting, but they're planning on giving a presentation early in the year, um, in 2021. Uh, the kind of the basics of the campaign are they previously, uh, through some research, established that tech companies would be a good draw to Ellensburg. Um, they provide higher than median wages um, and require what we have here in Ellensburg to offer is a good fit for their needs. Um, COVID kind of, so in January's uh, strategic planning that Centerfuse did, they were planning a marketing campaign around that. COVID changed that a little bit and they're adapting their campaign uh, less to tech companies and more to tech employees and the workforce itself, especially since the Seattle area has several firms now that have told their employees that they will be able to work remotely um, long term. So they are doing a big campaign and targeting a very specific audience, which is scary in itself that we can do that, um, to come to Ellensburg and enjoy the quality of life here while maintaining their job uh, remotely. So they're rolling that out. It's running now. If none of you see it, it's because you aren't their targeted audience. Um, but yeah, that's that's going on, and so they wanted to make sure the council was kind of getting an update on the work that they're doing. And that's all I have. Thanks. Nancy, good luck. Uh, yeah, I, I was at the utility advisory uh, council meeting, and a uh, good discussion with staff on a number of issues. Uh, attended the law and justice committee uh, this week also uh, and the community re uh, resource fund committee is still working <clears throat> and just wanted to put a plug in if anybody's looking for a place to drop some money before the first of the year uh, think about contributing to this fund where we're starting to get low again um, and donations can be made uh, to Hope Source uh, with the designation for the Community Recovery Fund, and those will be routed to us. Hope Source is our bank, and they're keeping the money and they're issuing all the checks for us. Um, so if you uh, have a need uh, for that, uh, that would be a great place to put your uh, to put a donation. That's all. Great, thanks, Tristan. Yeah, I attended the Arts Commission Library Board meeting. I think, I think that's it. This is our last meeting. Uh, Josephine is doing a great job since she's now she's juggling both of those as staff liaison. And I know the Arts Commission is eager to know um, who their permanent art liaison will be since there is that emphasis on the, the interim. When Josephine is doing that work, um, they're also eager to work on their website, um, trying to be more proactive with their calls for art and how they reach out and, uh, about the work that they do and recruit there. The library board is just a delight. Um, they still have hopes of library expansion, but to be funded all by fundraising, however long that will take, uh, but it's certainly worth the effort and the report. Great, thank you. Um, I just had a couple of uh, representatives at the Chamber Ledge Day with our delegation. Um, <clears throat> and I think probably the crux of it is that there's uh, sort of that ongoing concern that we raised in the letter that um, much of the focus in, in Olympia could be on sort of a, a west side perspective. Uh, there was quite an extensive conversation on policing and some of the you know, it's the piece we were talking about earlier this evening. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, uh, with the work that the chief is doing and bringing somebody like David into the into the mix and the conversation and some of the other conversations that have occurred with Comprehensive, um, <clears throat> we're already having those conversations and our concern is that they're going to legislate and mandate certain reallocation of resources uh, for out on a statewide basis. And, um, so there's quite a concern there. We, um, I raised the issues that we've basically been raising in terms of local control and direction. 
Um, I had a PTAC meeting. The PTAC is actually going to have some pretty cool stuff out um, by the end of January. Um, we'll get it to you, but it's basically um, just a totally cloud-based uh, app <clears throat> with intuitive use. It will tell you how long it's going to be before the next bus arrives. Just all of the things that would actually go with the regular transit system. Uh, we're also starting a, a contract uh, to redo the logo. Uh, just to kind of update it. It's been a long time since that's occurred. Um, Nancy and Nancy work, and I work to, uh, we have a draft ordinance, as I indicated to, during non-agenda. Uh, non there is a draft ordinance that Terry's reviewing. Currently, we haven't sat down with John and Terry to look at timelines when that might reemerge, but the, the, the core work on the ordinance has been, uh, from our perspective at least, is in front of Terry and we just need that direction now before we can get it back to council. And he's a um, little distracted at the moment. A little distracted mm -hmm. right now. Um, and then John and I did leadership Ellensburg where I got to make up any reason that I ever ran for council <clears throat> and uh, we'd go with it. So what we're going to do, I'm, do we need a break, five minute break? Okay, so I've got nine o'clock exactly. Let's reconvene 9.05 for the exact. Uh, we'll be in 20 minutes. John, do I need, to, or Terry, do I need to go through why we're going to, or exactly did you create the record submission? Uh, uh, John, John has already create, created that record, so I think we're good. I uh, just remind council members you'll need to leave this meeting and click on the link to the Zoom meeting um, in five minutes. Right, great. Thank you much. See you in a, see you in a few.